I want to jump just a little bit because we, you know, we've we've gone through eating up our time, which I'm cool with because we've had such a great discussion. But we did want to talk about some of the newer products and uh, get your ideas. One of the big questions that Rob and I like to ask a lot of the manufacturers is we see the challenges these days with integrating car audio systems into you know the factory systems. I just bought an F-150. Mm-hmm. It's got the B&O system. Uh, you have to buy a $550 adapter to get preamp outputs of the factory system. So what do you think about um, the difficulties today with trying to get aftermarket uh, car audio into these cars that have these premium systems and the difficulties involved with that? Yeah, that's a great question, Derek. Um, and, you know, the dashes are getting more complex. It's harder to replace the radio. And sometimes it's just not worth it. The The electrical is tied in. The dimming is tied in. The air conditioning controls are tied in. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense to pull that radio out. And I know Dean and uh, Fernando at Five Star Stereo worked with you on your Ford. And those guys are really great with understand electrical systems of modern vehicles. And we get a lot of questions here at Rockford Fallsgate. Why don't you make more source units? And I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, when we were developing source units with our partner, Delco Electronics, uh, we were wrapping a $20 bill around each radio that we sold. So it was a losing system, but we were trying to break into the source unit market while selling a lot of aftermarket as well to try to make up for that so that we could gain a foothold. And now that vehicles uh, have more complex electronics, it just doesn't make sense. So we've actually invested a lot of time and effort into uh, integration products like the DSR-1 and the 360 type uh, topologies. And uh, this retails for about 269. And it's basically like a black box and it lets you retain the source unit in the car. That way you don't have to worry about messing up the dash, but you can put this black box in and then still run all your aftermarket amplifiers. You can still put, you know, on a factory system, probably about 600 watts worth of power and, you know, a couple 12s, uh, some component component systems in the doors. Uh, But stuff like this, um, this was actually a partnership with iData Maestro. Now iData Maestro, they're their uh, specialty is remote turn on systems. So l- like in colder weather climates, um, you know, you push the button, car warms up, you get out and you're nice and toasty. Well, because they know how to talk to electrical systems, we partnered with them. We're good with the audio side. They're really great with the integration side. So together it was a natural fit. And we developed this, uh, it's really a disruptive uh, processor because of the price and because of the functionality, like this allows you to keep your factory radio and add all your aftermarket products. And that's actually where we've been investing it is, is products like this. Now I'm gonna show you something that we use uh, internally. A lot of people don't know how to set up a DSP or if you do know how to set up a DSP, you're used to just you know one microphone like what we've got here. You put the microphone as if you were sitting in the seat and then you use your iPad to dial in the adjustments and whatever sounds good, sounds great. But what happens if your wife is short and you're very tall? How do you adjust that? Well, we've got a really cool tool that I'm gonna show you. And this is a six mic uh, multiplexer that we built here. Uh, Actually, Mike Koza did build this. Uh, one of the engineers that used to work here. And uh, this actually is uh, a multiplexer that uses six microphones. There's a left and a right on the high, a left and right in the mid, and a left and right in the low setting. So what this does is it mimics a tall person, an average height person, and a short person in an automobile. And this, of course, would be their left ear, and this would be their right ear. And what this does is this gets feeds into the multi- multiplexer and it basically sums the signal so that you can get a, a running average of what that uh, response looks like. Now, when we were working with Nissan to develop, you know, a good little uh, factory installed system, we used this type of device. So that way we knew how to tune a digital signal processor. Um, so we use this type of machinery. Uh, this is very expensive, so I'm super uh, appreciative that the engineering group let me borrow it and take it over here into marketing. Um, but it does allow us to kind of normalize the signal and help you still get that aftermarket sound and make sure that you're covering, you know, 
several different drivers in the automobile. Like I say, your wife, maybe your son, uh, maybe you, you know, you all sit in the driver's seat different. You may uh, move the seat up, you may move it back, but your head level is at a different height. And things like this multiplexer help us integrate um, into the factory system so that you can retain that radio so that you can add the aftermarket amplifiers. And now, now you're really speaking Derek's language when you're talking about a very niche tool that's that's somewhat obtuse. Like that's right up, that's big D territory, right? I'm doing one so, next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get with your engineering guys. We'll get the specs. <laughs> that the uh, so the the DSR one now is that an automatic DSP or do you have some manual control over it as the end user? Um, there's two ways to do it. There is, um, the, the, the DSR one can be set up in what's called like a universal mode so that you manually have to set everything up and it basically lets you tap into it as a normal digital signal processor. And then there's what's called maestro mode and you pull down a configuration from the website and it programs this to talk to the radio. And, uh, so that is all automatic. It takes care of the door chimes and all the interfacing with the factory system. That part is automatic, but you still uh, can use your iPad to tune the output. So it does a lot of different things. There's two main functions, universal mode and then maestro mode. And maestro mode is half of it is automatically done for you. Okay, so what product do you have that would like be, I guess you guys maybe still sell the 360 mm -hmm. six. Is that, is that still your DSP that you guys currently sell yeah the 360.3 uh is actually the the big brother processor the dsr1 is the little brother processor and the main difference is um the 360.3 has summing signal capability so in a lot of modern cars if you got say a five or seven speaker system um there is a separate set of components that are only providing a small narrow bandwidth of frequency range well you can't necessarily tap, you know, out of the source unit to get a full 20 to 20 kilohertz uh, audio signal. So you actually need to top, uh, tap into the front tweeter, the front mid range and the front mid bass to get per se that 20 to 20 kilohertz range. And that's where the 360.3 comes into play because it can sum and normalize those signals together and produce a full range frequency sound so that you can send it to your amplifiers. The DSR-1 does not do that. And that's why there's such a price difference because that is a patented uh, topology and there's a lot that goes on, a lot of horsepower needed to do that and sum all those signals together. That's a great uh, explanation. Thanks for that, uh, Eric. And, you know, it's a great answer to the question because uh, you know, the challenges that people have these days with integrating with their factory systems is there. There's no way around it. You know, you can't change your head unit in most cases. So you have to figure out a way to get better sound. As we know, we I did the video on the F-150. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much that B&O system costs because it's part of a huge package that costs a lot of money. But, you know, the fact that they're selling that as a premium system and it's just garbage you know, it's like, man, I could have spent probably a thousand dollars in decent aftermarket gear and it would have sounded a ton better. So I'm going to work on that coming up, but, uh, it's just, you know, it, it's great to see that. I mean, you guys know this, you know, that head units aren't the, the wave of the future, unless you're talking side by sides. Uh, but, um, you know, things like that, you have to have to stay with the market and understand where things are going and people just can't swap their head units out anymore. So it's great that you guys are on top of that. And I know you make fantastic products for it. So thanks for sharing that. 